Hey all you backyard explorers, welcome to another beautiful day to be outdoors. We're back here at the sanctuary today and since it's Mother's Day, or right around it, we are going to be exploring all the magnificent moms in the animal kingdom here at the Catherine Violet Hubbard Animal Sanctuary. So what you may be seeing behind me is the first one that I want to take a look at. Now, You've probably seen these around ponds and swamps and other wetland places. This particular box, when you see them this large and near water like we have over here, this is meant for wood ducks. Wood duck moms are actually pretty incredible mothers. What they do is they lay their eggs in these boxes, they line the box with feathers and wood chips uh, to make sure it's nice and soft, and once the babies hatch, they leave this box within one day. Now, the cool part about this is, is that the mom will first leave the box and go out and make sure that the coast is clear, make sure it's safe and that their babies are safe and that there's no predators. Then what she begins to do is call the babies out of the box. Now, ensues after that is a really funny scene where these little baby wood ducks peek their head out and they just make a leap of faith because they jump from their nest and they bounce on the ground like a little rubber ducky ball. And then they will scatter down to the water and they're in search of food right away. And what happens then is they will look around, make sure everything's safe. And if a predator does show up, the mom has a particular kind of warning call. And that warning call will tell the baby ducks, it's amazing how they know this, to go and hide and seek shelter and stay completely still wherever they are. They don't, they can't fly yet, so they can't run or fly off or anything like that. They go under something and freeze. Quite incredible to see. So, this is our first mom of the day. We're gonna go see what else we can find. So we're in a meadow here at the sanctuary. A uh, beautiful little wet meadow with skunk cabbage growing around us. And if you've ever walked through an area with some tall grasses or some uh, wildflowers or places like that, you might be lucky enough to stumble across one of these. And what you have actually come across is one of the most dedicated mothers that there are. This is the egg sac of a praying mantis. And the praying mantis, well, that mom is so dedicated that right after mating with the male, she makes sure that her babies are taken care of and have the energy to survive. And she does this by eating the father. That's dedication. So one of the animal moms that we know we have here at the sanctuary lets us know about their presence because they like to mark their trails. Uh, the way they mark their trails is by this right here, scat. Uh, scat, as we've mentioned in other videos, is a very nice and scientific way of saying, well, poop. Now, this is coyote scat. Coyotes are one of those animals that usually finds a rock or a high area along their trail and they will put their scat there to make sure everyone knows, hey, this is our trail because they do form packs and one pack is going to defend their territory and their food against another pack. So this is their way of saying, hey, this is our food area. This is where we're going to eat. Now, the mothers of the coyotes, they're kind of interesting because they like to play a little bit hard to get. They, uh, they make the father court them for about two to three months before they finally say, oh, okay, you're the one. And uh, once they've decided that and that they're going to become mothers and have pups, and they can have anywhere from one to 19 pups, which is just incredible, they will then usually create a den site, which I haven't found here at the sanctuary yet, although I've been following their trails, so hopefully we do find it eventually. Uh, they'll tend to take 
burrows of other animals like fox or groundhogs and enlarge them and stay in those areas for quite some time. So if we find it, we'll definitely uh, show you. But for now, just wanted to show that we do in fact have these uh, magnificent moms here at the sanctuary. They do, uh, obviously they're mammals, so they do, the pups do require mom for milk. Uh, after they have been weaned, they are brought food, the pups by the moms and the dads in this case. Uh, and then after that, there's this learning period where they'll continue to make sure that the pups have enough food to survive, but then they also take them out hunting with them and they actually teach them how to hunt and survive. Uh, the same way that people are taught what to do to help them survive. That's why you go to school. All right. Let's go see what else we can find. So one of the interesting moms that we have here at the sanctuary is the ermine or the short-tailed weasel. Now they're in these walls right now raising their young, usually about four to nine of them, but could be anywhere up to 18 amazingly. Now we know that we have them here because we've caught some video of them on our game cameras hunting in the evenings. Now the moms are going to be raising, they'll be feeding them here by giving them milk because they are mammals so the babies are dependent on the mom right now and after about eight weeks or so they grow very quickly and they'll start coming out of their dens inside here uh, they'll be the mom will take them out on hunting expeditions and teach them how to hunt really quite incredible now after a couple weeks after they're born, the little babies actually develop this scruff of fur, this thick, dark fur around their neck. Now we're not positive, but the thought is, is that that may actually help moms pick them up by the scruff of the neck to move them around the den. So hopefully we'll see them out here in just a few weeks. So we're hiking at the sanctuary and I'm following the trail of some deer. We can see the two toe marks pointing up towards the top of our picture and I will move forward a little bit and let's see the next footprint there we go so, so we're gonna follow this trail and see if we can't figure out sort of maybe where they're bedding down Okay, so this is pretty cool. We followed our deer tracks all the way up that muddy path and it get, brought us to this meadow area over here where all these grasses are. Now, what you can see though is all the grasses have been flattened down in this sort of large circle-like area. Well, the reason that they've all been flattened down is you, we found their beds. This is where the deer came and rested and flattened down the grasses and hid in the meadow so that they couldn't be seen by predators and were safe. So this is one of the many ways that the mother deer cares for and teaches the young on how to survive. Now, the really interesting part is what the mom does with the brand new babies. And this is happening right around now, is these deer will have these babies that can walk right away. The babies though, even though they can walk, they, it's not safe for them out during the daytime. Too many predators, they don't know yet how to act or how, where to go, or uh, they're, they're really not agile enough to run away. So they're born with those spots and that uh, color of fur, of hair actually is what they have, uh, so that they can really camouflage well. You see, mama deer is going to hide baby deer in the grasses or in some shrubs or some bushes and she'll leave the baby there all day. The baby's instinct is not to move. So this is very important for people because you might find one of these deer babies in your backyard, one of these fawns in your backyard and it's just cuddled up there and you might think it's been abandoned. It has not been abandoned. It's just waiting for mom to come back. So the best thing you can do is let it be and leave it there. Mom will come back for it and make sure it's safe. So as you can see right here on the rock, and I can actually hear some activity as well, we have some gray squirrels. We've got some freshly shelled acorns over here, and being that we're talking about moms today, if I really want to find mom around this time of year, well, she doesn't have a whole lot of time because she's busy with the babies. And if you want to find squirrels and their babies, better look up. So let's pan on up up here, and if we head up to the top of the tree, 
you can see right here where I my finger is pointing that is a squirrel nest probably lots of you have seen these big balls of leaves up at the tops of trees and thought oh it's a big bird nest or something like that and that is possible because to be honest with you there's a number of birds like crows and owls and some hawks that will take over these squirrel nests and put their nests on top of them which is very disconcerting very upsetting for the squirrels especially when you have a predator all of a sudden living on top of your house um, so what we call these balls of leaves that they live inside we call those drays, D-R-E-Y. And that's a squirrel home up there. So what I would suggest is go check out your yard or around where you live or in a park nearby. See if you can find a dray where you live. Hey kids, got a quick joke for you to tell your moms. What's a squirrel's favorite rapper? Dr. Dre. <laughs> You know, it just wouldn't be Mother's Day without sending flowers. Now, it's a little tougher to do this year, so I'm taking the opportunity to send this beautiful trout lily that's blooming all over the sanctuary to both my mom and all the magnificent moms out there. Happy Mother's Day.